I think it's time to gather all of my unpopular opinions in one video. I'm a mom of two, if you're new here. My oldest is four and a half and my youngest is almost two years old and here I am. I've got a lot to say. Literally yesterday on Instagram I saw a reel with one very unpopular opinion that I agree with. It's normal for kids to don't sleep through the night. Hear me out. My almost two-year-old sleeps through the night more often than my four and a half year old. Yes, the kids are just different. And another great point there is that adults don't sleep through the night every night because we wake up to go to the restroom, drink water, sometimes we have a bad dream. Why we assume that kids aren't sleep trained enough, aren't healthy, depressed, not normal when they wake up and need our help? Come on! Especially here in the US, it's a big trigger for lots of parents as I've learned over the years. There is a stigma that if your kid doesn't sleep through the night by age like, I don't know, sometimes they say even six months, then you're a bad parent. No, you're a good parent if you support your child through hard times, even if it's a night time. Next, there is only one way you can discipline your kids, teach them how to behave, what is good, what is bad, what they should do or should use or not use, is by disciplining and improving yourself. Because no matter what you say, unfortunately, if they don't see you with your behavior prove it, like don't yell, like don't smoke, like don't drink, of course those things will be down the road, but still, if you're smoking, you're drinking, and then you assume that your kids uh, somehow, just because you told them it's bad, won't do that too later on, you're wrong. If you want them to eat healthy, you can't be eating Doritos in front of them and tell them that it's bad and you cannot have any, but I can. I mean, you have to be fair. I have lots to work on myself, including food and yelling and other things. They're little sponges, they're soaking in everything we do and it puts so much responsibility on us to be better, to show them an example of how to treat people, how to communicate with your spouse, how to eat, how to exercise, everything. So being a parent, it's a long journey of working on yourself. So don't expect to discipline your kids without improving and disciplining yourself. Next on the topic of discipline, we don't do timeouts. I think timeouts do not do any good, they do not fix the problem, and they're actually pushing your child even further from you when in the moment of throwing tantrums, I don't know, hitting, biting, whatever is the reason you can send your kids to timeout for, it is a way to show that they need more connection with you, that there is something wrong, that they can't maybe speak up yet, especially when, you know, when talking about babies and toddlers, but by just pushing your child even further away, you're not fixing anything, you're actually making things worse because you're not getting to the root of a problem and you're just pushing them further and further away from you and this is obviously the worst thing you can do for a long run and yes kids might need some space they do need some time to calm down because when they're in in the moment of tantrum there is no logical part of their brain working it's just how they are but for the best results you should stay there with them show them that you are able to handle all of their emotions and then set a boundary and stick with it now to the topic of food oh i have a lot to say here so let's start with a little bigger kids. I do not celebrate cleared plates. My daughter attends school, daycare, and lately she started trying to show off her cleared plate, which of course sometimes she does clear her plate because she wants to, but I keep telling her this is not an achievement, this is not something you should be looking for or us as your parents are expecting from you. You should eat as much as you want until you're full. If you don't want the rest of the food on your plate, that's okay, we can put it in the fridge, eat it later. We're not celebrating cleared plates because I hope we all know by now that making your children finish their food is actually a form of abuse. It's something that leads to overeating, something that leads to obesity and lots of problems with their relationship with food in the future. Next, unpopular opinion about parenting and food is something I'm working on because I am myself the person who has not a very healthy relationship with food and I'm learning how to don't label foods for kids because I'm trying to explain that there are healthy and unhealthy options but labeling them as a bad food, sugar is bad for you, which I have used to say a lot but I firmly believe now that this is not the way to do it. My opinion is you need to find the words to explain why we cannot have more of this 
and why we should eat this instead how you say it is extremely important do not demonize foods because then psychologically it leads also to unhealthy behaviors with foods also dieting i am trying to eliminate this word from my vocabulary in general because dieting is not healthy it's not something that should be engraved in my children that it's a normal way to like lose weight or something and we don't even talk about weight loss i'm still finding my balance there learning more but my unpopular opinion is that demonizing foods talking about dieting is toxic and unhealthy for the kids and for you to be able to feed your kids uh, more healthier options we need to come back to when they were babies and hopefully you're watching this when your kids are still little because it all starts when you introduce solids so my very unpopular opinion about starting solids is that rice cereal is the worst thing you can start solids with because it has zero nutrition it might be high on arsenic and it's just not something that you guys eat not something that your child will be eating more down the road why do we start with rice cereal here in the us at least i firmly believe we should be starting with vegetables you can do cereal but not rice cereal especially not white rice cereal i also think that you should not be introducing fruits as first foods keep that further and further away as much as possible there have to be a good two three months where your kids need to try all the bland tasting foods like avocados let's say and broccoli because if you give them a banana you think they will be very interested in eating and just trying you know broccoli they need to get a very wide palette of taste and i know that most pediatricians even here in the us won't agree with me on that but there is no harm in doing so i believe that you should not introduce fruits in the first couple of months which avocado is a fruit too right so with exception of avocado <laughs> on the same note i don't think that we should be adding like salt and spices to baby's foods like we do for us because they often say that uh, kids should be eating what you're eating which is true but their taste buds are so pure let them enjoy the real taste of food we're just used to all the sauces and everything and if you try and eat more bland foods with less salt and less spices in it you will start feeling the real taste of food again so certainly don't overdo it with spices with salt again at least for a few couple of months add it little by little later on give them a big palette of flavors give them a spoon don't forget that one and if you have any questions about certain solids or maybe you already ran into some problem i offer coaching sessions with me one-on-one -on -one about solids so leave your email in the comments if you would like one and i'll shoot you back an email with all the details Leave me a comment, give this video a like, subscribe and I'll see you this one.